to another episode of Going Back to the Basics, where we're going to take exercises out of uh, instructional manuals, instructional books, and walk through them together as if we're the student and uh, see, you know, how does it all turn out? You know, does it work? Does it not work? Of course, they're supposed to work. So, well, did we work or did we not work? I guess is the answer. Hope you enjoy it. We're going to try to do a lot of things, and uh, I hope it's just about as fun to uh, to watch as it is for me to do because it's fun to go back and well, it's fun to go back to the basics. Enjoy. Alright guys, welcome to another Back to the Basics. Uh, we're working through uh, blacksmithing basics for the Homestead uh, book. Uh, Joe De La Ronde, De La Ronde or De La Ronde. And uh, today, we're the, in this particular project, we're going to do a trammel hook. Uh, trammel hook, if you don't know what it is, looks like this. Alright. And for cooking over, uh, well cooking over anything I guess, cooking over a campfire, if you want to uh, hang a pot, on a tripod or some other cook system and raise or lower that pot closer or farther from the fire. A trammel hook allows you to do that by pulling that pin from one of these holes to another. So I've never done this and again as he does with all of his exercises he uh, gives you a little information ahead of time and then uh, kind of tells you you know which you know, how to do it in general. Uh, he's asking for 3 16ths by 1 inch stock 24 inches long uh, mild steel and then a quarter inch diameter round um, steel uh, 10 inches long so that's what he's asked us to, to, to get for the project um, and then he walks through and, and explains what you need to do all right all right so he recommends a 24 inch piece of this one inch stuff but in reality it's, it's based on what you want the length to be. Uh, first thing he asks us to do is taper that hook out. I don't know if I showed you that or not already. So draw out the hook and make that top hook uh, offset a little bit so that the center hang is the center point where it's going to hang will be in line with those holes. Otherwise, your pot might be a little bit cockeyed. Uh, he then he says, determine how long you want it to be. Cut off the bottom of it. Uh, punch the holes, the spacing that you want. This bottom piece comes is bent out and has a hole in it for this uh, hook to be slid into so we need to punch that hole and then make that bend then we need to take our, our little hook uh, draw out a taper put a little hook on the end and a 90 degree um, pin there basically on the side put it all together so that's what we, he said to do let, let me get some steel I don't know if I have 316s we'll just look for some all right, I got my uh, my pieces cut. I ended up going 18 inches with the flat stock because I don't think, you know, he says cut it off, so um, I'm not going to waste that steel. And I went a foot long with this hook here with a quarter inch round stock. So let's go back. First thing we need to do is put that, draw this, draw this down and turn it into a hook. All right, so we're going to just kind of give it a good old fashioned guess to see what kind of, you can see what I'm doing. steel I'm going to need. To draw this thing out to a hook, you see where I'm going with it there? Once I get something started, I can start going over this horn now like we've learned for drawing things out. Alright, I'm going to maintain the same width basically until we get down to our point. Or we can go over the edge like this and draw it out. Whatever technique it is that you use for drawing. nice to have a book that says how many heats he would expect you to do that. I don't know if he could do that or not, but that would be cool. Just to, you know, give yourself some type of scale to judge whew, to judge um, your progress or, or how well you're working. Just an idea. Maybe there's a book out there that does that. We'll draw out a little bit more here. enough now I'll start squaring off that end because we do want to turn that into a hook. I'm actually going to clean this back part up a little bit so that curve looks pretty. Not so beat up. All right then we'll square this out start drawing a taper on it for our hook. All right let's get our taper going here. I 
I'm not trying to teach you how to do things. We're just walking through the book together. So we maybe find out together some of the things that are things to watch out for, what things work best. I set that off to the side a little bit. Just gonna check the book to see if it, he mentions how long to make that. There, he does not tell us how long to make or how big to make the hook, but he does say he wants a curly cue on the end. So let's do that. A little thinner there to make that happen. In his picture, I want to see if he goes through. Yeah, let me show you the picture here. All right, because you want your curly cue to be in the right direction, right? So here's our taper, drawn out, curly cue up, all right, and then um, bend the hook the other way so the curly cue's on the outside. It's things like that that every once in a while you mess up. And another thing is we want this center of this hook to be in the center of this pants. We need to bring this this up if we're not off to one side already. Curl it around so that it, the hook will. When it's hanging, it's going to hang vertically. So let's put our curly cue in and make that bend. He does have a section in the book about doing a curly cue. What I call a curly cue or a curl. And right over the anvil like that. Just get it started depending on how much of a curl you're looking for. And you can close that right off. You know, whatever it is you're trying to do. But he shows how to do that. Now we got to protect that curly cue a little bit from our next bend. Let me heat this up. Actually, we have to protect it from getting mounted off, too. That's a pretty thin piece of steel. The way to do that is to just cool that curly cue off a little bit. All right? So that's going that way, and we want to go this way with it. Over. He's using a bending jig. In um, the book, we don't have one. We haven't made that yet. So we'll just go over the horn or whatever method we use. So again, if this is what we don't want. If you see, this is the center of the hook. All right, it's in line with this edge. I want it in, in line with this. So we're going to come back and just offset that hook on the back side a little. All right, just like that. So now that center hang is going to be right in line. Center, right in line with the middle of it. So I'm happy, happy, happy with that one. All right, now I put a score line right down the center. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Just marked off the middle. There it is right there. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll start measuring down what, uh, where we want these holes to be. He didn't mention it, anything, but we'll say let's start at two inches down and go every inch. Well, that's a lot of holes. We'll have fun poking those. We have good, good uh, punching exercise anyway. All right, and then we'll leave at the bottom here a half an inch for that hole that's bent. And I might as well, since I'm marking, we'll go ahead and bend that out. Let's say about an inch and a quarter. All right, so there's our marks. And what I'll do now so that I can see these marks when the thing's hot is I'll just put a nail punch in there. Or a center punch, rather. So that I can see where to do those. And that's going to be a lot of holes. Oh, I'll tell you, whatever I did to my shoulder is not the thing I should have done to my shoulder. That's a fact jack. I'm going to punch where I want that bend to be so I have that in my mind and I'm going to punch there. Don't let me punch that hole out though. Alright, so that way I can see what's going to happen once it's in the fire and we'll come back and we'll start punching. Alright, back in uh, the previous section, the uh, geez, basic technique section, he does cover punching. Uh, again, drive the punch halfway down through the piece flip it over you should have what I call a show it should either have a bulge or some some marking that you can see if everything works well you flip it over 
and then punch the plug right out through the pritcher hole or through other some other method. That's what we'll do. He mentions in the exercise to use a punch that's you know bigger than the rod that we're using for the hanger. Uh, the, the bigger it is, the easier it is. You know, he explains the easier it is to, to adjust while everything's hot and cooking. So I think it's about a 3 8 punch that I have there. That's what we'll use. All right, we want everything laid out in front of us best we can so we have everything that we want. Get this cleaned off. And again, this is something you should be able to do right over the anvil. I can't see my, I can't see my marks. I think that's the first one right there. If you're blind like me, you might not be able to do this. And all right, so we go halfway through, pull our punch off, flip it over. See, there's that bulge, that indentation. And once you get used to it, supposedly, you can read where that's where you want that to be. And we'll get her started here. And we'll go over the pritcher hole. Oh, punch! The plug came right out. Nope, not yet. I thought, I thought it did. There's the plug, and we weren't lined up properly, all right? But close enough, because it broke right off. He explains that, and everybody will tell you, a little coal dust inside there, um, especially on thicker pieces, will help keep your punch from getting stuck. And again, if you do that well, you shouldn't get a heck of a lot of bulging. So I just narrowed, I just kind of got rid of the bulge that happened there, and now my uh, hole is no longer round. So that was a mistake, or not, now I need to redrift it. But uh, if you do that well, if you line them up well, you should have nice clean punches. Uh, depending on the type of punch, this one is tapered a little. So by going through both sides, you should end up with tapers on both sides. There's a whole, whole section on punching that we'll do. But let me just uh, clean that one up, since I'm not happy with it. And we'll do one more together. Hopefully that'll look look well, and I'll come back and show you the last one that I did. All right, so because I messed that one up, I got a, a drift, which is a little narrower than the punch. We'll just re-round that. I didn't see him mention where if you were to fix your, your bulging with the punch in, that should give you a round hole, right? Which that seemed to work. Like I said, we're going to cover punching again. All right, let me come down and get the next one going. Right, let's do this next one together. Get it cleaned off so I can find my mark, hopefully. Yeah, there she is, right there. Center it up. There's our show. Hopefully, line it right up perfectly this time. Come on. Yep, that feels good. Over the pitcher we go. Plug went. We get rid of our bulge now. With the punch still in there. See if that gives us a little better rounder. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Pull down our punch. And clean up our piece. Not bad, not bad. A little bit of a bulge there, but I'm happy with that. This is an old heavy hook, heavy hook thing anyway. All right, I'm going to punch the other ones out, and I'll bring you back when I get to the last one. All right, I'm moving along with these punches. Some of them are good, some of them are, I mean, they're all okay, but uh, I just got thinking this piece of uh, round stock I cut is only a foot long. I'm going to lose an, a, an inch or so when I bend it, gain probably the same amount with the hook but I'm gonna lose that when I use the hooks. So and my point is, is I probably have enough holes in here right now. So what I'm gonna do, instead of continuing to punch, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself enough space for the bend and punch the next hole down here and then nip that off. I think this whole dimension, um, again, he didn't give exact dimension. He said, measure down what you want, cut it off. Eight or nine inches, he said. We'll punch one more hole. All right, let's go ahead and punch that last hole. And again, I'm not going to go where I have my mark. I'm going to go a little farther than that. So the mark's there. Let's go with, let's split the difference here. I think I'm okay with that. How about there? Yeah, 
right, another piece is a little worn to handle, so we gotta flip her over. So let's get a good wind up one here, Chandler. Most of them I did pretty well at, but some of them I didn't. It feels good. There she goes. And I have been, after the punch, fixing my edge with that punch in, and that's been working really well. And then just cleaning. Cleaning up. Not too bad. You see, you can see this one right here. There's a little bit of a, a taper in it. This one's got a little bit. They're not perfect, but they're pretty darn close. And again, they can just be redrifted to clean them up if they need to be. But for this purpose, I think that's just fine. Oddly, I'm getting a bit of a banana out of this, and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong to cause that, but I think we're happy with what we got right now. So what I'll do is come, I'll go ahead and nip that off a half an inch, a quarter of an inch away, and then we'll go ahead and put a bend in here. I right, just sipped that off. Now he, he said to try to make this bend as close to the hole as possible without distorting it. So I'm gonna go just about where I have that mark there and, and hopefully it'll be uh, good enough point is if the hole's out too far then you have a better, uh, there's a better chance of that pin sliding out of one of these holes and everything crumb crashing down. So I'm going to heat this thing up. I don't want to distort that hole and I don't want to distort this hole. So to do that I'm not going to go over the anvil. I'm going to actually go to my device and put the bend in there. Uh, that'll be the safest way to protect these I believe. Alright let's see if we can do this without distorting without distorting either hole. That would be good. We want that to be about 90 degrees. Not too much, more than 90, but about 90. We don't want we don't want it more than 90. Then we'll have some binding issues. Now in that process, I did mess up this last hole a little bit. Just a little bit, a little smaller than it used to be. It bent a little crooked on me. So what we'll do is we'll just redrift that. This bottom hole doesn't look too bad either. We should be hanging pretty straight. It's not bad at all, but I'm gonna go ahead and redrift this last hole. All right, let's just kind of clean that last hole up. One thing I didn't mention is I was not using my forging hammers on the punches and drifts. I'm either using a dead blow or I have this dedicated what I call my knee knocker and there's a reason for it. Uh, hammer for cold steel hammering. So that looks good. Heck while we're at it let's redrift this if I can do it without burning my fingers. Just to clean these holes up a little. Yeah that looks nice. Okay. And there you have it. There's the first part of our trommel. Trammel hook. Hang it. So we'll cool that one down and now we're going to go ahead and do the second piece of this, which is the actual hook itself. And he does show it's pretty simple exercise. We're going to end up with a 90 degree bend and then this typical hook on the end. So a curly Q hook, very much like this one, and then a 90 degree bend on the other side. Alrighty, so again, we're going to draw this out a little bit, so we'll go to square first. And we'll just start putting our taper in. Again, this does have to hold a pot, a whole little chili or something, so we can't go too narrow with it. But we do want a curly Q on the end there, or a curl on the end. So that, that part of it we want, I want anyway, nice and thin. Let me just heat this up again, small stock. Doesn't take long to heat, but doesn't take long to cool either. We'll round that off. Yeah, it's good enough for rounding anyway. Again, go hexagon first. And then you can go ahead and be picky about it. Uh, 
and I'm tapering that point down pretty darn thin at the end here because that's my curly cube. Put that in. Oh, shouldn't take but a second or two to get some heat for that. Just a second or two. Again, we just start that curly cue around until we know what we got. And we just close it right up. And so we're happy with it. I'm happy with that. And again, from that point, we're going to go up and put the hook in itself. We got to be careful we don't melt our curly cue, nor do we want to distort it by hitting it with the hammer. So I'm going to cool that down. And we're just going to go over the anvil a little, or over the, the um, bick, the horn. I'm not sure what, what diameter we want in there, but that looks like a good one right there, I'd say. In proportion, according to his drawings. We'll line everything up, get everything in place. Curly Q's just a little off. Not anymore. Okay, so is there anything tricky with this hook? I don't think so. Let me cool it down. Alright, now when we go to put that 90 degree bend on the end, it's kind of hard to tell from the picture, and I didn't I didn't notice him mentioning it in here, but that bend has to be, here's the hook in the this picture, has to be uh, perpendicular to the direction of this hook. So we don't want it, my point being, we don't want to take this hook and bend it this way, we want to bend it that way, all right? So that both of the hooks are in the same direction from the, the hanger to this. So uh, inch or so, just enough to hold it, and he, and he does say you want to go a little more than 90 so that it doesn't fall out by mistake. All right, so we'll say a little more than an inch. Oh, there's good. Now again, we may not be able to go with a really tight 90, or not 90, but angle there curve rather a really tight curve because we do got to get it up through that hole but uh, like he mentioned uh, you want to go a little bit more than 90 I just want it to look squared off I don't want things crooked um, I don't want this piece round it's kind of curved for me hammering on it but I do want it a bit more than 90 like that okay and as this cool down Again, my point is, depending on the hole sizes that you made these holes, if you're too tight or this sole isn't big enough, you wouldn't have room to, to slide that in. But that's it right there. You got your trammel hook ready to go. Let me cool this down and we'll see, we'll, we'll test it out a little bit. Alrighty, so there you have it. Uh, hook this across your, the top hook goes across whatever tripod or, or cook system that you have. And uh, hang your pots off of that. And if you want to uh, give it a little more heat, you can lower it down on the, the trammel and it gets lower. Or if you want to just give it back to a simmer, you can raise it up and that gives you, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, five or so inches of, uh, of movement. So that's very, very, very cool. I've never made one of those before. I know a lot of the Marine actors like these and they're always looking for that kind of stuff. So I'm very, very pleased with it. One trammel hook. So again, this is an episode of Back to the Basics, uh, using blacksmithing basics for the homestead by Joe De La, De La Ronde, or something like that. Uh, and we just went through the trammel hook exercise. Uh, very, very cool project. I love projects when we're, when we're practicing and learning. I love part projects that take multiple parts, you know, where you have a, basically a machine, mach you know, a, multiple parts working together. Whoop, there it is. All right. And there you have it, back to the basics, trammel hook. Very, very cool, and I bet you these will sell. Betcha, betcha, betcha. All right, campers, etc. It's a lightweight thing. And definitely handy when you're kicking over and up in fire. Catch you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. found this video uh, helpful, educational, maybe even if you just found it entertaining uh, and you want to support me, you can jump back to my channel. There's a button on the right hand side of the screen called support 
And it's kind of like a tip jar. You can go ahead and leave Chan a tip for this video, and that'll help me make some more. I guarantee. Thanks for your support, as always.